Hi, I've clicked on to today's Tropical Tibet for Friday, March 14th, 2014, and today we'll be talking about the upcoming hurricane season in the Atlantic Basin for 2014. Now, when you see a video like this or a post such as the one that this video is in, you should always be a little bit cautious uh, because these seasonal hurricane forecasts month in months in advance are an inexact science, and we are, after all, coming off of one of the uh, perhaps worst forecasting busts that the meteorology community as a whole has had for the Atlantic hurricane season, namely last year, where all of us, including myself, uh, thought that the season would be more active than normal. It turned out to be one of the top 10 quietest seasons since 1950, with only two hurricanes and uh, no significant landfalls um, for the United States. And there are a couple of reasons in hindsight uh, that we can learn from uh, so that we don't make that mistake again. Uh, however, this isn't an exact thing that we're doing, trying to predict months in advance what the hurricane season will be like. And the takeaway message for anybody watching is that a hurricane could form anywhere and hit anybody on the U.S. coastline or the Caribbean or anybody who's affected by hurricanes during any given year. And you should always be prepared for that, no matter what the experts say may happen during the following year. And I'm not going to proclaim myself to be one of the government experts here. The Climate Prediction Center will uh, issue their outlook in May. But as usual, I'm going to talk about what my thoughts are for the upcoming year. And in front of you right now is the sea surface temperature anomaly map for the globe off of my site. And we notice a couple of things. One is that in the Pacific here, we see a weakening of the La Nina signal. There's not as much cold water here, and there's actually a lot of warm water uh, that is about to bubble up uh, due to a Kelvin wave underneath the surface, which we can see here. Uh, this is the surface of the ocean. Here's what's underneath. And uh, I have to tell you, this is a very impressive Kelvin wave. Uh, very similar to some strong El Ninos that we've seen before, such as 1997, which was the Super Nino. And uh, we may not get that, uh, but we may get a fairly impressive looking El Nino through the summer and into the fall if the climate models are currently correct. The European is forecasting um, an El Nino that is near the strong threshold, 1.5 Celsius above normal, once this thing starts to surface and this water starts to get up here. And uh, that will affect the hurricane season greatly because if you warm up the water in here, you, f you focus upward motion in the Central Pacific and uh, the outflow from that convection essentially enhances the subtropical jet across the Atlantic and shears this region and really prevents uh, tropical systems from getting going in the Atlantic. We also see now this horseshoe ring of warm water in the eastern and northeast Pacific with cooler water east of Japan. This is the opposite of what we've been seeing during the last few years since 2008, which has been a negative PDO signal. This is more of a warm PDO signal, which we were used to prior to 2007. And this, coupled with an El Nino, tends to limit hurricane activity in the Atlantic during the summer. And uh, this is a, a climate pattern that typically does not favor active seasons, but favors the Pacific, the Western Pacific typhoon season, the Central Pacific, and the Eastern Pacific hurricane seasons. They generally benefit from this. Now in the Atlantic, it's also interesting. We see all this cold water, especially off of Africa here, and even up into the northern Atlantic south of Iceland. Uh, this is more typical of a negative AMO, and we've been in a positive AMO phase since 1995. The so-called active era has been due to all the warm water that has been in the Atlantic since that time, and we're expected to have that for at least another decade or two. Uh, but sometimes you'll get years like this one where the AMO spikes negative and we have more more cold water here and this is kind of similar to last year in that the water off Africa is not very warm so the main development region doesn't have a lot of warm water focused here and we would expect a quieter Cape Verde season tropical waves will struggle more than usual but what's interesting is we do have a lot of warm water in the western Atlantic off of the southeast US coast and uh, even when we have strong El Nino years even if we get that big warm tongue out here that shears off the tropical Atlantic sometimes you get lower wind shear off the eastern seaboard and sometimes there's room for homegrown storms to form close to the coast and especially when you see warm water here like this you have to be careful in watching for storms to form close to land and if we do get any storms this year of a significant number a lot of them may be in this area of the Atlantic either out to sea affecting nobody recurving like this or perhaps closer to the coast in which case you can have the chance for a couple of glancing landfalls or uh, scrapes with the coastline that is always a possibility 
Now, I always like to find uh, historical analogs for the hurricane season, especially based off of the current sea surface temperature anomaly profile and what the ENSO is doing, the El Nino-La Nina cycle, uh, to see what might happen um, this year based on similar years. And right now, we're coming off of a 46-month stretch of non-El Nino conditions. If an, El, if an El Nino forms this coming summer, it will be four years since the last El Nino, and that's a fairly significant occurrence uh, during the last 60 years. That does not happen very often. And uh, after long stretches without an El Nino, we can find similar years where El Ninos came on following a long stretch of neutral or La Nina conditions. And I found 10 such hurricane seasons, and this is the track map for all of those years, which you can see up here in the title. Now this is a, a huge bowl of spaghetti that is very difficult to make any sense of, but so what I've done is I created a frequency map showing exactly where the congregations of tracks will occur. This is the frequency anomaly relative to the uh, climatology from 1979 to 2012 of tropical cyclone tracks passing through every one of these one degree boxes that you see here. So blue colors indicate a great lack of storm tracks relative to normal and the orange indicates more storm tracks concentrated in these areas relative to normal. And you can see that in the deep tropics we do have a very quiet season on average from these 10 analog years, but you see this showing up off the southeast U.S. coast and out into the central Atlantic, an area of concentrated storm tracks, which you can kind of see if you look at the actual tra track map here. A lot of storms forming to the north in the subtropics, which is typical of El Nino years, where the wind shear is low and where the water is warm. You notice we have all this warm water here. This also tended to occur during the analog years I chose, and so we see this showing up. And that's what we have to watch for this year. Now, we also have to consider what has been going on this particular year during this particular winter. We just came out of the winter. It's still in the process of ending, still pretty cold in some places in the U.S. here. Uh, but if we look at February specifically, what I've done is I've created composite analogs using both 500 millibar height, mean sea level pressure, and sea surface temperature. And if we take the best analogs using those three factors, we come up with this list. And uh, these are nine years here. They are not the same as the list that I came up with here. However, there are some entries that are the same. And if we take the intersection of these two lists, uh, this one and the one I showed you previously, we see that uh, we have about five years, 1957, 63, 72, 82, and 94, that have had similar finishes to the winter here in the North America region, and they have similar um, El Nino profiles to what we're dealing with now. And we see the same general pattern, very quiet in the deep tropics relative to normal, and uh, where the activity is, if there is any, seems to be off uh, east of the United States and out into the Central Atlantic, which would typically be tracks recurving like this out in the middle of nowhere, or perhaps some squirrely tracks near the coastline, which could uh, cause some scrapes with the United States or even some landfalls. Um, with this kind of a pattern. But in general, a very quiet type of season. You can see a lot of blue here. There's not a lot of tracks, not a lot of storms, uh, and that is expected with this kind of pattern with El Nino coming on and very cold waters in the tropical Atlantic. Now, if we look at the climate models, they agree pretty well with the analog years. If we look at the June, July, August, the summer period, this is the forecasted sea surface temperature anomaly. You see it clearly expects the El Nino to come on. This is the average of the American climate models, the NNME. And you can see the strong warm tongue there. You can see the, the PDO signature still in here, kind of fighting between cold and warm, more of a neutral signal, but this big warm pool going to continue pumping that ridge over western Canada and Alaska during the summer. And it will be interesting to see how that turns out. You can see the warm water east of the United States on the model with cooler waters um, in the deep tropics. And this, again, focuses upward motion away from the typical breeding grounds and focuses it more to the north, uh, which means we're going to have a rather random spray of tracks probably out in the middle of nowhere, much fewer in the typical breeding ground in the main development region. So fewer storms than usual, but if they do form, they're going to tend to form north of 20 latitude and uh, more in this area here. 
And if we look at the precipitation map, the probability map from the same model set, we again see a very wet in the central Pacific as we would expect for the El Nino, very dry in the tropical Atlantic in general. Interesting that it shows a little bit of wet in the African wave train. The models seem to be forecasting a fairly active uh, Western Africa Sahel rainy season due perhaps to some colder water in the Gulf of Guinea down here and we'll have to see how that pans out but I would expect tropical waves to struggle in this region this year given the wind shear that will be coming out of the Pacific and how cold the water is there now. Uh, but you can see a little bit of, of wet probability showing up east of the southeastern United States and in the Bermuda region extending out here into the central Atlantic. And again, I think if that is where, uh, if we're going to see a significant concentration of storm tracks this year, that is likely where they will show up. But we're not expecting a lot of tracks this year. So this map here shows my general thoughts. Again, quiet in the deep tropics, typical for what should be an El Nino year. Of course, anything could happen. The Enzo models are not perfect, but right now it looks like we're likely to be heading towards an El Nino this season. And uh, even if we don't have an El Nino, the cold water here is likely to limit activity in this region. And if we are going to see much activity, we will probably see cyclone activity um, off of uh, the southeastern U.S., the eastern seaboard, out towards the Bermuda area and the central Atlantic, where the water is currently very warm and is forecasted by the models to persist for the next several months. So in terms of the number of storms, I'd say about 8 to 10. Uh, that's below the long-term average of 12. Um, it's fewer, actually, than last year. We did squeak out, I believe, 13 storms last year, but they were all so weak. We only had two hurricanes. Last year's ACE, uh, the accumulated cyclone energy, which is a measure of the overall level of activity in the tropics, was only 34% of normal last year. Uh, that will likely uh, be a little bit higher this year just because last year was so low. It's very hard to go uh, that low again. So we'll likely uh, be a little bit higher than last year, but still well below normal, 50 to 70%. Um, is what I expect. So those are my thoughts for this season. Of course, we will see what happens. Again, these forecasts are imperfect, and a storm could hit you at any time, anywhere during this upcoming season. We are not predicting individual storms here, only the general level of activity this coming summer. So please be safe and be prepared for any storms that might come your way this year. And uh, we're still a couple months away from seeing our first tropical waves start traipsing across the Atlantic. We usually start seeing those coming off Africa by early May, and then we can start watching the Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico region, and off the southeast U.S. for the first storm of the season by late May and into June, most likely. So we're still a ways away from that, but once we get there, you will hear about it here. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.